Station Vacant wanted one robot to complete our semi-final lineup. Applicants must be ready to rock and roll. Dancer Waltz, a terrible tango. Saints Alive, a jive too. No, we don't need dancing or prancing. We need crashing and smashing and bashing. However, they've done it so far. In and under, over the top, 15 robots through. Who will join them with a shove? Or a push. Now listen, just shush, roboteers. You think you're up for the job? You'll have to shoot down the robot wars, mob. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who swears the dog ate his battle plans, Craig Charles. Robots fall into two groups. Either they're your Terminators, psychopathic killing machines who'd sooner cut off your arms than say how you're diddling, or they're like C-3PO, always packing a light lunch whenever Luke Skywalker goes on a suicide mission. So which category do the robots in Robot Wars fall? After all, some of them are cute, some of them are colourful, and some of them look like the demon love child of a microwave oven and a vacuum cleaner. The thing is, whatever they look like, the eight robots here to do battle for a place in our series semi-finals are Terminators, every last one. Let's just hope I'm not the one they've come back to kill. Philippa, who are tonight's psychos? Thank you, Craig. We have a gathering of stunning, stunning, stunning robots in the pits at the moment. This is Victor, first up. You can't see, unless you come round here, the flail, which is the most significant part. If you can... Wow. And apparently it goes so fast that it goes blurry, so that's going to inflict some damage. Look at this monster. This is, how do you pronounce it? Tom Tron. Thank you very much, because I'm not very good at my pronunciation. Is it the most, most beautiful creature? It used to be a lot more lethal, but it was far too big and far too heavy, so they had to take off half the weapons. But the important thing is they kept the decoration, which I think is really good. This is Trident. In here is a modified stair lifter. Would you believe it? But it's shiny now and it's beautiful. Hopefully not to have too many scratches on it. You may understand why this is called Scarab when you look at its pincers. And how much pressure did you say these two can inflict? Um, two and a half tons at the tips of the jaws. Yeah, so that's got to hurt. And hello! Hi. Dreadnought team. Yep. No, Dreadnought, well, team and helper because Ken, you may remember, is on holiday in Florida. So we're not saying hello to him because we're very annoyed with him for lying by the pool. It's outrageous. Uh, modifications include... New, new motor for the fork. New motor and for the fork and a complete forks. makeover. And a complete makeover. New shell. It's fantastic. This is a, a new one, Rattus Rattus, who apparently is very old because he came through in the 17th century. In the 17th, 14th. 14th century. Was it that long ago? Oh, my memory. You've forgotten. <laughs> Carrying the bubonic plague. Rattus Rattus used to be a lot longer, but then they realised they couldn't fit him in the car and bring him to Robot Wars, so they had to cut him in half. He still works just as well, though, apparently. This is Psycho Killer. They tell me it's Salvador Dali painting on the front. Yeah, I can see, I can see. Classic wedge shape with the axe. So hopefully that will work very well. We know from the past it does. Smidzy stands for... Sorry, mate, I didn't see you. Which we'll be expecting this lot to say when they come out of that horrible arena. The gnashing jaws of doom will be inflicted on anyone who comes anywhere near Smidzy, I think. What, the gnashing jaws of Rattus Rattus spreading pestilence? Or will it be Smidzy for sorry, mate, I dented and smashed you? Twin Trin against Trident looks like a shiny wheelie bin. Scarab with the pincers against Victor 2 here to stay or gone in a blur. Psycho killer Darley on a wedge against the alien-looking Dreadnought. That's how they line up in round one. Too late for our robots to kiss and make up now. Let the wars begin! From Guernsey, Rattus Rattus. The longest in the heat, even though it has been chopped down to fit in the boot. The chassis from an old desk, its forward-facing spikes and battery-driven flail are dangerous. It'll row dent a few hopes, that's for sure. Hi, I'm Gary. This is Rick. Uh, this is our this is our robot, Rattus Rattus. It's called Rattus Rattus, which is the Latin name for the common rat. As you can see, it's quite common. It sustained some injuries previously in other fights uh, when it came from Mesopotamia in the 11th century. Went across Europe in the 14th century, killed 25 million people, and now it's here at Robot Wars. From Kent, Smidzy. They describe their weaponry as gnashing jaws, crushing jaws, lift you up and dismember jaws. Cool, they cannot duel this team. They say it took six weekends to build and six months talking about it. I'm Mike Reed of Team Ixian. Um, this is 
Robin is our driver and Andy, and this is our robot Smidzy. We call it Smidzy because it stands for sorry mate I didn't see you. Um, we're motorbikers and if you get knocked off by a car the first thing the driver says is sorry mate I didn't see you. We've made Smidzy so it'll be flippable, run either way up, and we've got the jaws so that we can change them, we can go under another robot, over the top of it, depending on which way up we are. Robot ears, stand by. Rattus, Rattus, from the 14th century. What's that all about? Gary Pike and Richard Ozan, his teammate, and Smidzy there with the driver, Robin Bennett, in control. When it opens its jaws, Smidzy looks like a giant, great big black and red clothes peg, I think. But it's Rattus, Rattus on the attack. No gnawing jaws, but there at the back, the flail. There's Robin Bennett at the controls of Smitty. Spent six months touring Australia by motorbike. They are all big bikers in the team. And how annoying is it when a car driver says to you, a biker? Yeah, I didn't see you, mate. Now, it's Rattus Rattus just gnawing away at Smitty once again, pushing him in towards the CPZ. Don't forget, once you've been pushed into a CPZ, the house robot can grab you. Let's have a look at this moment again. Rattus Rattus up and over Smitty and bouncing healthily away. Again, the little push. You can see there, the tactic being used is to push towards the CPZ. Kilolot's waiting for anything loose. Rattus, Rattus, the more aggressive of the two so far. Onto the arena spike, which has become such a, a feature of this series. And really, Smitty doing very little attacking work. It's all Rattus, Rattus. And eventually, I'm sure, he's just going to push Smidzy in towards the CPZ. He'll get there in the end. Bouncing around. It's dead metal awaiting. Can't come out of the CPZ to gather a robot unless it's on the fringe. Ah, Smidzy, low enough to avoid the pincers of dead metal. Robin Bennett trying to get Smidzy on the attack, perhaps. Needs to. In comes Rattus Rattus with one drive. Poised to come in with another. Slam it off! Oh, Rattus Rattus in trouble. Slammed against dead metal pincers and the body shell almost came flying off there. She separated from the main frame, the chassis made from an old desk. And off comes the fur-covered alloy shell. And now onto the flame pit as well. So trouble here for Rattus Rattus. What on earth is that underneath the, the top part of the jaws, if you like? Gary Bite looks bemused. A little twitch from him, and also from the front of the rat. And was he caught in a rat trap there? Well, there's still life in Robin Bennett and his team. A little tug on the beard of Andy Pugh there on the right. Now the circular saw of dead metal slicing into the top of Smidzy. It's going to be quite close, this, in the end. Unless Smidzy's pushed towards, 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 towards the pit! Get in! Get in! Pit, 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 pit! Yes! Smitty's finished. I think Radish Radish deserved it in the end. The rodent rules. Rattus, Rattus, go through. Well, what do you get from us is adoration, because, you know, even though you're out, what a fantastic fight, wasn't well, I'm it? it? I'm glad it looked good. We had, yeah, we, had we, need, we need a tyre now. We need a tyre. I just put that one on. <laughs> oh, outrageous. <laughs> but you inflicted yeah. some damage there on Rattus Rattus. No, we didn't. No, they, well, they, 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 they rammed us badly and yes. damaged themselves, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, and the Rattus Rattus are really good guys. And, like, we, yes. wouldn't have, we wouldn't have even fought today if they hadn't lent us half their tools and <laughs> um, a, a good chunk just... of their spares. Really? Yeah, no, yeah the really spirit good. in the pits yeah. has been amazing. We've been yeah. working on that for the last two days. So, what can you say? Wonderful. Really bunch of people. Look, all this woodwork nailed up. Some nasty spikes out there. What, what was this bit that was hanging well, that, out? That was to stop the front from collapsing, which didn't work. No, oh, it's all in bits in there. It is, but we won. You won? It we was won. stunning. I was saying to the other guys, it was one of the best fights I've seen in but, an awfully long but time. But I have something to say to the other chaps. Oh. Sorry, mate, I didn't see you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I tell you, you fight a good fight. It's a speedy robot. It is. It's fantastic, but really, seriously, are you going to be ready to fight again? Because look at the state of that. It's just uh, cosmetic. Just wound. cosmetic. 
It's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. In it, we're we'll falling worse. out. We've had worse. We've, we've had worse. We've had worse. Yes, okay. it's only a flesh wound. Okay, you'll be all right. Indeed. Well, I'm very proud of you. You're not afraid to get your whiskers frazzled. Whiskers frazzled or not, Rattus Rattus through, and next up, Tun Trun against Trident. From North Wales, Tun Taran. What work has gone into that spooky looking fiberglass shell? The motors are from 12 volt wheelchairs. It cost just £200 to build the intrinsic parts. My name's Mark. I'm the team captain of Tun Trun. I've, in my team, I've got Ian and Nick. Our main weapon for Tum Trum is its forehead at the moment because we had to take the weapon off the front. Um, it's made out of fiberglass and it's developed over a period of time and didn't start off quite like this the first day. From Leeds, Trident. Two drive motors and another for the weapon make this tri drive Trident with an axe body shell of stainless steel. The chassis is a modified stair climber. At 20 miles an hour, it's the fastest in the heat. Hi, my name's Stephen. And this is Neil and Peter. He's the captain of the team. And this is Trident, our robot. It's got these stair climber wheels and an axe weapon powered by an electric motor. Roboteers, stand by. Turn, turn, magnificent teacher Mark, Ian and Nick, his pupils, and Trident. Three. Two, Young Stephen at the controls. One, it's the slow progress of Turn, turn against the far nippier Trident. And I'd say at this stage, Trident has the more potent weaponry. Oh, what a shame! That shell is already being splintered. The face, the gargoyles, the twisted masks of terror and that's just in the robot wars pits at lunchtime it's tried it's spinning to come on the attack again i think one of the big problems with turn turn is a lack of mobility at the moment it can only get up to five miles an hour at best at worst it seems to be honest immobilized at this early stage they did have a big snow plow on the front they had to take it off to make the weight for this heat it seems to lack weaponry uh, uh, and just about everything else. Trident edging around. Oh, what a disappointment this is. So much work has gone. Look at the great teeth on the back. There's the mask, the horns as well. Snakes are in there, everything's in there. A robot built from hell. Oh dear. Hardly a heavenly performance by Tun Turin. Trident nudging in again. Almost feels sympathetic, I think, to its opponent. A little bit of smoke coming from somewhere. Shunt coming in now on the attack, maybe to finish it off. The camera on the front of Shunt, of course. Oh, the axe on the back of Shunt. Nudging Tunter and almost up and over. Oh, the fiberglass is on fire as well. That just makes things worse. Now Matilda coming in with the chainsaw on the front of Tunter. There goes the axe. Here comes Matilda on the attack. <laughs> here, here. Tunter lost a little essential bit. So, uh, on fire, Cease. death as a post, uh, and finished, Tun Turin, to be honest. Beauty, no match for Braun. Trident are victorious. What happened? Lost all power. It just wouldn't go. <laughs> After that stopped. initial... After the initial... We hit it, yeah. and then it stopped. For some reason it stopped. We don't know why yet. Until we get the shell off. And then the flames stuff. started oh, yeah. licking out <laughs> yep. from between for. the ears and the eyes of the creatures that were on the robot. <laughs> well, it was designed for that. Yeah, art. Art Definitely. in the arena, that's what we like. Thank you very much for supplying that. <laughs> Are you happy? Very happy, yeah. Happy to uh, win. Just had to destroy yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. Sunshine is just gorgeous. It was such a pity to destroy it. Yeah. Any damage that we should know about? Uh, the weapon seems to have stopped working. <laughs> yeah, so we did wonder if that was the case, because yeah. you weren't no, you weren't going for it with the weapon. I know at that's all. why I was just swinging the background and hitting it with that. That's okay. all I could do. Well go and fix it then. <laughs> In the rubbish, tin tin, twin twin, chip chip, trident through, scarab against Victor 2 next up. From Potter's Bar, scarab. Sleek design, it'll beetle around the arena at only 8 miles an hour though, not quick. The jaws are hydraulic, 
The frame tubular steel, the 24 volt motors come from a wheelchair. Hi, my name's Martin Eaves. I'm captain of Team Scarab. This is my teammate Andy. Tell us a little about Scarab. Um, our main weapon is these jaws, um, and between them, we've got about two and a half tons of pressure. Um, so hopefully we're going to bite some things and also we've designed it so if it gets flipped by a wedge it can be driven uh, the other way up. From Surrey, Victor. Wakey, wakey! The main weapon's a morning star flail, two foot in length, the body shell's made of steel, powered by two wheelchair motors, took six months to rebuild from the last series. Hi, I'm Guy, team captain, teammates Gareth and Kenneth. This is Victor, he fought in the last wars, still got scars from Matilda. It's the same frame, but with a much improved weapon at the front, which now spins around and also goes forwards and backwards. This was Victor in the last wars. Damaged by Matilda, we heard. Running the gauntlet and straight into Killalot. Guy was at the controls. Showed good manoeuvrability and bravery. And it was a good run, you know. Rumotiers, stand by. Here, Victor's newest opponent, Scarab, then. With Martin Eves there on the right at the control, Andrew Miles. And Victor, too. Three, Once again, two, Guy Pickett one, at the controls. He wants to become a famous six, DJ, he tells us. Now spinning the flail of Victor, too. Immediately on the attack on Scarab. It is a bit of a blur, isn't it, that Morning Star flail? Two foot in length. It's powered by a motorbike starter motor with the weights on the end to cause damage. Little scene of that. Oh, something came flying out there. I'm not too sure what it was. So, oh, it's the grill at the mesh. There, protecting the engine compartment of Victor 2. The house robots will have noticed the flail also seemed to be impaired there. At Killalot, just zooming in to see what sort of damage he can cause in the next few minutes, I would suggest. Oh, there's his lance immediately on the attack. But Scarab seems to be in trouble here on the arena pins. Paws are working, but there's no one with their paws on the Six. remote controls. They're out, Scarab, immobilised. Well, living up to its name, Victor. They go through. When you got disabled, and it seemed to be about when you went on the spikes. Yeah, we can't yeah. see any holes. We had a look on the days, we can't see any holes, though. So. Really? Because it, did, it no. looked like it went mad on those spikes. Yeah, yeah. No, we can't see any holes in it, but um, I just I didn't see the spikes. <laughs> I just have to take the blame. You know, with those are the spikes, you know, this is the point of the spikes, that you're not meant to be able to see them, but everyone really knows they're there. I know. It's like the other guy from Kilohertz saying, I forgot about the pit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't, you know, just don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I know you've won, and congratulations. But do you think that's a bit too high because it's kind of looping around over the top? Well, it should have come down, tilted a bit yeah, further forward, we thought. Oh, it was designed to go yeah. down a bit yeah. further, but yeah. it didn't go down a yeah. bit further. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go into a war and oh, forget about the enemy. Scarab, you sure? Victor 2 through. Psycho Killer next up with Dreadnought. From the Wirral. Psycho killer. Took two months to build the axe, is powered by a wheelchair motor, ready for thrills and suspense. Hitchcock Psycho wasn't as frightening as this. Coming, mother! Hello, we're Team Psycho Killer. This is Martin, my son, Matthew Carroll, the pilot, and myself, Steve, the captain. This is our robot, Psycho Killer. It's driven by two Sinclair C5 motors. Loads of power. He's got this little toothpick which we're open to drop it down and pin someone in front of the robot. If that fails, we're open he'll drive up, spin over, and land in a pit. From Nuneaton, Dreadnought. Using many parts from the old version of Dreadnought, this Robot Wars vet returns with a new mechanism and motor for the forklift, a new body shell design. Opponents, your future hangs on the decision of Judge Dredd. Hello, I'm David. And I'm Faye. And this is our robot Dreadnought. We've been in three wars, it's our third war. There's one or two changes we've made to our robot. We've had to build a new body shell after Sir Killalot was very rough with it. We've also improved the lift motors by replacing the motor with another wheelchair motor. Again, you can't heap enough praise on the team for improving their bodywork, doing it all over again after it sustained this sort of damage. Would you really want to rebuild it all over again? 
The wooden base also last time was a bit of a problem. Robot ears, stand by. There is Psycho Killer then, with Stephen Burns, Matthew Carroll at the controls, and young Martin, and Dreadnought, Three, two, David, and one. Faye Volt. Activate. David likes his walking and swimming and into more than a front crawl as Dreadnought attacks from the left. Psycho Killer just eases away. Classic wedge shape, as Philippa said earlier on. I love the little furry hand on the pickaxe. Where did they dream these things up from? What strange lives our robot tears have? I wonder if it was his idea there in the middle, Stephen Burns. Perhaps young Martin. He wants to be a Lego designer when he grows up. We all. Now, it's Psycho Killer away from the flame pit. Ooh, Killer Lot's over there. What are they doing? Driving straight towards Killer Lot and the gleaming eyes and the pincer. Well, there goes your weapon. Straight away. Ah, oh, suicide. Matthew Carroll wants to be a fighter pilot. Could help us if he does. Defending the realm with driving like that in the skies. Are you sure? They've got no weapon now. It's just... <laughs> Look at it. What a sorry-looking thing sticking out. Looks like a... An earbud. Clean your ears out. Let alone take Dreadnought on. Faye likes it. David Voles at the controls. A little push of Psycho Killer. I think the heart has gone out of the Psycho Killer team. And in comes Shunt. Slam. A little lift of the snow plow at the front of Shunt. Look at the damage on the side of Psycho Killer as well. A couple of dents, a couple of slices, and oh, look at that. In comes Dreadnought again, this time trying to push up and under. Psycho Killer now driving curiously towards dead metal. It's been a nightmare for them out there. Psycho Battle, let alone Psycho Killer. The Dreadnought team know they've got victory between their little pincer ram. Spiky things at the front. In comes Killot, in comes Shunt, down comes the axe blade. Pinned in there to the top slot of Psycho Killer. Such, oh, look at those slices. I, I don't think we've seen marks like that for a while. Under the base now of Psycho Killer, more damage. Long, long, long ago immobilized, it would seem to me. Perforated and punctured. Pinned, pummeled, punished. Psycho Killer into the CPZ. The house robots Six. finishing him off. Dreadnought victorious and through to our second round. This was classic. We yeah, have got a lovely souvenir. Chopped straight through it, didn't he? It might come in handy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, it's your own fault you're missing it. You, there you are, lying in Florida, in the sun, by the pool, and you're missing all this excitement because your team are through. We've done it. You've done it again. Yes. Um, and unscathed. Well, it's Actually unscathed. It's not only scratched. It's one or two little marks. One or two little marks, and that's it. We'll survive. OK, so you can go and put your feet up for a while, then, until yeah. the next... Here they go, Dreadnought, with Victor 2, Trident and Rattus Rattus. In the second round, it'll be Rattus Rattus against Dreadnought, Victor 2 against Trident. And now for the climax of the pinball. It's our last visit to the arcade for some pinball wizardry. Will our final entry storm the leaderboard or sink into oblivion? Hey, let the trials begin. The very last run of the pinball. Let's see how we've got on so far. Dominator setting the early pace. This was a good run. Consistent and accurate, 160 points scored. Crusader started well, but went into the pit. Daft as a brush. Eye of Newt didn't score quickly enough. Got torched by the house robots. Six pack trundled through bravely, we thought. Not a bad run at all. Now, the highlight for Kilohertz was the multi ball release. The low point of the kilohertz run, being bashed, smashed, and crashed by the house robots. Rocks 2, 
wasn't great. Oblivion 2, not much better. Heading for Oblivion in the Robot Wars history books. Inquisitor didn't ask too many questions. We didn't find answers there. But then a new leader emerged. The last heat saw Razor Eclipse Dominator, a close shave, a Sweeney Todd chop at the other competitors, and indeed, Razor still having time for a nip at the house robot. 210 points scored, magnificent. 50 clear of Dominator. There you can see the bravery of six pack. But Mortis can kill off even Razor if it runs true to pedigree with that axe and lifting arm, and quite heavy too to dodge the house robots. The Mortis team of Rob Knight, Arthur Chilcott and Benjamin Gordon. Rob, Arthur, veterans of Robot Wars. Arthur in the middle. Rob Knight at the controls. Is stand by. Most Three, sophisticated controls we've seen two, in Robot Wars, really. One, Mortis, really hungry to get out on the attack. And taking those barrels first. Well, this is an unusual route, an unusual tactic, and the spear goes down too. Good point scored early on. Mortis needs to get out beyond the barrels, changing direction to try and dodge kill a lot, veering away from the barrels. Needs to get up and over that ramp, I would think. No, deciding to go for the multi-ball release instead, using the axe just for a final blow. No target hit. 50 points for each target. On the side wall, 75 points for the target down the bottom of the arena. More barrels here. Now up and over the ramp. This is a very, very unusual route. I don't think that'll count. They didn't complete the ramp. Taking on Killalot, that won't score you anything. Get you in trouble, I should think. Killalot has the freedom here of the whole arena. But as we speak, Razor's still looking good here, I think. Mortis, time is ticking down on you to close on that huge 210 points scored by Razor. Will he go up and over the ramp again? They've lost their way here, Mortis, after that bright opening through the car door. More points to be scored, but if they back too far in, oh, they nearly went into the pit. They've got themselves between a rock and a hard place here. Mortis trying to get traction with the great tank tracks. Now edging towards the door. But Rob's got himself into a real pickle here. There's a brick underneath Six. Mortis as well. Oh, came to an end prematurely, really. run from them but not good enough they enjoyed it opening gambit saw them take on the barrels in the top right corner of the arena the sphere trundles its way towards a pit there in the top left of your picture then the multi-ball release more points scored there against the barrels in the other corner of the arena but only 60 points scored for Mortis. Big disappointment for them, down towards the bottom. Razor, though, with 210 points. Worthy champions. A brilliant run from a splendidly entertaining team. Simon Scott on the right, Vincent Blood in the middle, Ian Lewis on the left-hand side. And Razor, the Pinball Warrior Challenge champions, deservedly so. Now let's charge back into the wars. Lining up in round two of Heat P, Rattus Rattus against Dreadnought, Victor 2 against Trident, and don't forget they're playing to fill the last place in our semi-final lineup. Rattus Rattus, Gary Pike there on the left-hand side, and Dreadnought, David Bowles will take the controls. Rattus Rattus, splendid design. Dreadnought looks awesome, doesn't it? Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. Rattus Rattus is the heavier, but Dreadnought probably is the speedier. And you wonder what damage Rattus Rattus took in its last battle against Smidzy, when the shell, don't forget, was lifted up and almost off the main chassis of Rattus Rattus, which obviously has a problem here right from the start. They say it came from the 14th century. Well, the engines have probably ground to a halt long ago since then. And Dreadnought here, very much in the ascendancy early on. There's no life in Rattus Rattus at all. Well, 
It's Dreadnought that will be going through, I would think, on the evidence of what we've seen early on here, to the splendid times and hardly. Boomtown Rats. Rattus Rattus edging away from the pits into trouble because now you see the house robots can come in. They're allowed to come in for the kill if a robot's been immobilised. And, and let's be honest, it has. Hard cheese for the rat. And uh, Dreadnought's really won here by more than a whisker. Uh, what we'll see here at the tail of this heat is no future for Rattus Rattus, despite the whirling tail there, the, the flail at the back, and the forward-facing spikes doing no damage whatsoever. Matilda shunts it around into the CPZ. Oh, lovely, says Flash with the pincers to create a little bit of damage. I think really that the damage was sustained in its first round victory here, Rattus Rattus. You can see where it's been patched up for this second round clash. All Dreadnought needs to do is stay away from trouble, unlike Rattus Rattus, which has now been sliced apart. Well, it really is caught in the rat trap there, isn't it? It's Matilda's chainsaw bumping and barging. Gary and Richard in the Rattus Rattus cherry picker. In comes Dev Metal now. <laughs> a little bit of a slice. Oh, yes, thank you very much, sir. The smoke from the impact. Oh, yes, sir, thank you. And again. Yep. Not three cheers for Rattus Rattus, three tears for Rattus Rattus from the third attack from Dev Metal. Oh, really slicing into the innards of the rat. What a horrible thought. Dreadnought bouncing away. Don't get into trouble now, whatever you do, David. Stay away from Shunt and Co. Another scar of battle for Rattus Rattus to remember the house robots by. Dreadnought wisely getting away from trouble. And Dreadnought make the heat final. It's back to sewers for Rattus Rattus as Dreadnought fights on. You can't just to hide. sneak off like a little escape. rat down a sewer. Well, this yeah. is a big rat and it's not going down any sewer, it's but it nearly went rat. in the pit. It's a very big, very dead, dead rat, rat, unfortunately. What happened? Why did you stop? Well, it worked. We didn't Perfectly start. And tests, and you then didn't, it just died. You didn't start. You did no. a little bit, didn't you? It, it, it moved, it went tweak, and then just shut it's down. Yeah. Dead. That was and then it. That was that. that was it. So we haven't had a chance to find out what's wrong yet. It's suffered, so it's annoying. suffered from its own plague, I think. Yeah, see, the bubonic plague got to it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> that was easy maybe for you. And another easy round, yeah. Made very easy because the rat died. Well, that's what happened to us last street, that's what. Yeah. We died. Yeah. So I know how they feel. Oh, so you it feel really is horrible. Well. A little bit of yes. It's well, it was hardly a close squeak. Rattus, Rattus out. Dreadnought through to meet the winners of Victor 2 and Trident. Victor 2 team, you've been pitted against Trident, who, what, what are they, still polishing their robots? They're still polishing their robots, yeah. <laughs> and yet you're just about to go in there. How do you feel about them as opponents? Um, well, we're a bit worried about damaging their lovely, shiny bodywork. And we did say we'd put feather dusters on the end, but we decided against it. Okay. All right, so confidence then. Yes. Confidence <laughs> reigns supreme in the Victor team. Good luck. Here we go. We're discussing driving straight into the pit to get it over with. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that yeah. how you're feeling? Yeah. <laughs> They're really confident. I know. <laughs> you're not? No, well, but we weren't it, ready for it. Hey, so. it looks good. Gosh. Are yeah. there any real problems, mechanically? Like, what, it doesn't, doesn't work very well. <laughs> really? Does it not? The weapon doesn't work very well at all. Your weapon's not working very well. Not after the first match. You don't want to go in unprepared. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We'll what manage. Go? Fail to prepare. Prepare to fail, Trident, against the Victor 2 team. Once again, Guy Pickett at the controls. Roboteers, stand by. Three. There he is. Two, Kenneth Goddard on the right-hand side. One, Once met Michael Schumacher. Days. So you can expect Victor 2 to be speedy with the flail. The shiny Trident team. They say their weapon's been damaged. Well, it's being used, but it was a, well, no more than a tap, really. A little bit like a, a, a woodpecker trying to tap its way into a tank and not causing too much trouble at all to Victor 2. Now we know the Victor 2 flail weapon is limited also. Spins in a blur but doesn't really cause too much destruction. We've seen better weapons of that type and uh, 
Well, at the moment, the weapon has just stopped on the front hacking blade of Trident, the great pickaxe coming down. Victor 2 are trying to get the controls working again, I should think, on that weapon rig. They need to, and it sparks into life again. One of these weapons powered by car starter motors, motorbike starter motors, and they've got it working again. Victor 2 towards the pit, spinning! Whirling like a whirling dervish, but demonically into the pit! And it's Stephen Bennett, the controls of Trident, who goes through, and Victor 2 teetering and toppling, and in the end toppled into the pit. Oh, guy! Pick it out of that pit. It rests Cease. in pieces, Victor 2. Well, Victor was not victorious. Trident goes through to the next round. Let's hear it for Trident. Well, how do you think that went? You obviously won. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we won. We won. Lovely. And the axe works well. <laughs> the axe is it's pretty. It's pretty strong, isn't it? It is. It's very yeah. strong. It's a strange robot design, really. Why have you got to say one wheel on the front and sort of like six wheels uh, on the back? Actually, the three wheel thing's the front. <laughs> ah, that's the front. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The and the one wheel's the back. That's yeah. Right. Everybody makes that mistake. That's why they always attack us from the back. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you can go any further? The axe looks strong enough. We'd oh, like to have a go, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can we give a round of applause to Trident? That's Trident. Through to the next round. Who went in the pit? <laughs> um, like so many other great ones. We decided not to dive straight in there. We let them push us around a bit first. And then we went. And yeah. It was sending him back to McLaren. We can't put up with his driving any longer. Really? Yeah. Driving let us down, I'm afraid. Yeah. So you have to go back to Formula One. Yeah. Oh, terrible shame. <laughs> <laughs> you have to turn up for the books then, because you weren't yeah. confident at all. You're only confident I didn't seem in your confident. shininess. I didn't seem confident at all, did I? <laughs> oh, don't play this one on me, as yeah. so you might leave it now. The axe is a bit stronger than uh, people thought. But it works. Mm. It works as that well. Was a, I know. Works as well. It works. Oh, well, we knew it. Mm. <laughs> Very pleased. Yeah. I thought it was just going to fall off. Back to Formula One. Guy Pickett can get the formulas right in the chemistry class. It's tried in the, in the heat final with Dreadnought. Two robots made to look like whimpering puppies. Two already having kittens as they prepare to scratch each other's eyes out for the place in our series semi finals. The scalp so far for Dreadnought, it was Psycho Killer, first of all, and then Rattus Rattus. And for Trident, Twin Turin defeated. And then Victor 2 in the pit. Trident, you've got a lot of wheels. Yeah, we have. Have you got a lot of bottle? No, <laughs> basically. How do you think it's going to go? I have no idea. Anything can happen in the next couple of minutes. You're not feeling confident? I'm not unconfident, I'm not confident. I don't know what will happen against Dreadnought. I've no idea. This is for a place in the series oh, semi-finals. I know. Prepare to do battle. Good luck, lads. <laughs> Dreadnought. Hi. How are you feeling, then? Quite confident. We've, we've come a lot further than the last war. You have, haven't you? Yes. Prepare to do battle for a place in our series semi-finals. Really Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Two good teams, quietly understated. Dreadnought nervously away, perhaps Trident on the attack with the axe weapon they say is so powerful. Not too sure about that. Dreadnought has the splendid body shell, newly designed after the damage from the last series. David and Faye Vols are Robot Wars veterans. Again, Trident on the attack. The forklift at the front of Dreadnought. There's a new mechanism in this series as well. A really good robot, they say Trident is. With those curious wheels on the front. Again, now, this time, the pickaxe has caused a couple of dents there. Stephen Bennett at the controls. Loves his computer graphics. He plays the guitar as well, and he's certainly in tune here at the moment. A couple of dents there. Are there any more than that, I wonder, on the body shell of Dreadnought, which is slightly the lighter 
but the slower of these two robots and the weaponry of Trident could be important here because they've been the more adventurous, certainly. Friction smoke on the side of the arena, thrown into the air. Dreadnought's pinned in there. At the back, the pickaxe of Trident holding it in position. So, perhaps immobilized on the arena circular blades, allowing Dead Metal to come in with a thrust. I'm hearing from the judges, uh, Cherry Picker, that Dreadnought has been immobilized. That's why the signal's gone out to the house robots. They could come in and attack Dreadnought. And I think they're just exacting revenge now on Trident. House robots come from dark and dingy places. They do not like sleek and gleaming shiny machines, Stephen Ben. And this is why they want to rip and shred and tear. Get your polish out, boys. You will need it to repair your tattered machine. You see, we admire all your work. We really do. Splendid effort, lovely design, beautiful machinery. And then we like to mash it and break it and, and bend it and tear it and tatter it and destroy it. Oh, lovely. And Matilda now coming in with her chainsaw as well. We're enjoying it. This is a party for us, you see, on Robot Wars. Try the winners. We don't care. Take some of that. Six. Poor old Dreadnought long, long, long ago dead. Dreadnought gets naught. It was obviously disabled long before Trident. The house robot's a bit naughty there for going in on Trident, but Trident goes through to the series semi-finals. <laughs> Close run thing. <laughs> Just a bit. Um, I thought you weren't going to get out alive. It's, it's a strong I robot. Know that we'd How do you think you're going to fare now in the series semi finals? Pretty badly. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like unadulterated confidence. Give them a round of applause, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well, the neighbours are banging on the studio doors because we won't keep the noise down on Robot Wars. Bye bye. <laughs> After 16 heats, 128 robots, we're down to 16. We're back next week with our first semi final of eight. And what a lineup we have for you as well. First of all, Firestorm, Zippy and Nippy. There's Pitbull, a roly poly growler. Big Brother, Ominous, Omnipresent. Thing and the Adams Family team. They're back, the reigning champions, Panic Attack. Sure to cause chaos too with its big flipper. Mace too, very persistent. And of course, if they can get things straight, robot number eight today's with a trident through to the first semi final. Now that you've got decent air conditioning, it shouldn't overheat. <laughs> some nice aerodynamic moulding. You should be even faster. Before. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Before, yeah? That, that, that's, that's why we let them do it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, let it do it. Of course. Of course. <laughs>